Hello student. In this module, we will talk about the numerical based on bevel gear design. The problem statement goes like this. Find the module of a bevel gear and check it for wear load for the following specifications. Power transmitted 25 kW. Input speed 360 rpm reduction ratio 3 angle between shaft is 90 degree so let's write down the data for this the gear given is bevel gear power is 25 kilowatt n1 360 rpm and the angle between the shaft is given as 90 degree which is represented by epsilon step number 1 is to calculate cone angle we know the formula for reduction ratio as i is equal to sin of delta 2 divided by sin of delta 1 and epsilon as delta 1 plus delta 2 therefore i can write down delta 1 as epsilon minus delta 2 therefore i can be rewritten as sin of delta 2 divided by sin of epsilon minus delta 2 Therefore, delta 2 value can be calculated as 71.565 degree and delta 1 as 18.435 degree. Next, step number 2 calculation of number of teeth. Virtual number of teeth that is ZV1, assuming 20 degree full depth involute profile therefore f0 is equal to 1 so the formula is zv1 is equal to 2 times f0 divided by sin square alpha so by substituting the values of alpha in the above formula i get the answer for zv1 as 17.1 next actual number of teeth on bevel pinion since zv1 is equal to z1 for straight bevel gear, I can write down the value of ZV1 as 17.1 and delta 1 as 18.435. I get the answer for Z1 as 16.22 approximately is equal to 17. Next, actual number of teeth. I is given as Z2 upon Z1. Therefore, Z2 can be written as 3 into 17. Therefore, I get the answer for Z2 as 51. Z2 is perfect multiple of Z1 or I is equal to 3 which is a perfect integer. Therefore, hunting is required. So, I can write down Z2 is equal to 51 plus 1 that is 52. Now, again to recalculate the value of I as Z2 upon Z1, I can write down 52 upon 17 that is 3.06. So, I will again find out Zv1 as Z1 divided by cos of delta 1 that is 17 divided by cos of 18.435 degree that is 17.92 and Zv2 as Z2 divided by cos of delta 2. So, I write down 52 divided by cos of 71.565. So, I get the answer as 164.44. Step number 3 selection of the material for i less than or equal to 4 so we have the component as pinion and gear material we can select as 40 ni 2 cr 1 mo 28 having bending strength 4000 kgf per centimeter square and contact strength of 11000 kgf per centimeter square whereas for the gear it is the material is 15 ni 2 cr 1 mo 15 having bending strength of 3200 kgf per centimeter square and contact strength of 9500 kgf per centimeter square next step deciding weaker element so from the levis form factor for the pinion which is based on the virtual teeth we write down capital y v1 is equal to pi times y v1 which is pi times 0 0.1 154 minus 0 0.912 divided by zv1 
So if I substitute the value of ZV1 as 17.92, I get the answer as capital Y V1 as 0 0.324. Next, Levy's form factor for gear based on the virtual teeth. I write down capital Y V2 is equal to pi times Y V2. So I write as pi times 0 0.154 minus 0 0.5. 912 divided by ZV2. If I substitute the value of ZV2 as 164.44, I get the answer for capital Y V2 as 0 0.4664. Next, strength factor for pinion that is FS1. The formula is FS1 is equal to sigma B1 multiplied by capital Y V1. So if I substitute sigma B1 as 4000, and capital Y V1 as 0 0.324, I get the answer for strength factor for a pinion as 1296 kgf per centimeter square. Next, strength factor for the gear that is FS2. So the formula is FS2 is equal to sigma B2 multiplied by capital Y V2. So I write down FS2 as 3200 multiplied by 0 0.4664. So I get the answer for FS2 as 1492.48 kg per centimeter square. Since the strain factor for gear is greater than strain factor of a pinion, that is FS2 is greater than FS1, hence gear is stronger and pinion is weaker. So let us select the pinion for design. Step 5. Calculation of the module based on beam strength. Referring to PSG 8.13a, let us first of all calculate design power P as P into SF. So we write down 25 multiplied by 1.2, which is 30 kilowatt. Next, nominal torsional moment, that is MT, as 97420 into KW divided by N. So I put the value as 97420 multiplied by 30 divided by 360. So I get the answer for MT as 8118.33 kg of centimeter. Next design torsional moment MT is given as MT into KD into K. If I put the value as 8118.33 into 1.5 where KD is equal to 1.5 for unsymmetrical system. So the answer for MT I get as 12177.5 kg of centimeter. We know the formula for module based on the beam strength as m greater than or equal to 1.26 into cube root of MT divided by sigma B1 into psi m into capital Y1 into Z1. Taking psi m as 10 and if I substitute all the values into the equation, I get the value of m is greater than or equal to 0 0.4876 centimeter. Increasing this module by 20% to compensate for the radial load which was negligible in Levy's derivation. So we get m greater than or equal to 1.2 into 0 0.4876. So the answer is 5.8512 mm. So selecting the standard module as 8 mm, that is 0 0.8 centimeter. Next, find out transverse module MT. So MT can be written as 1.2 into m average. Therefore, 1.2 into 8. So that gives me the value of MT as 9.6 mm which is 0 0.96 centimeter. Step six is to write down the important dimensions of pinion. So the first one, average module M average as 8 mm, transverse module MT as 9.6 mm, pitch circle diameter, that is D1 is equal to MT into Z1 as 9.6 into 17, which is equal to 163.2 mm that is 16.32 centimeter. Next 
R is equal to mt into z1 divided by 2 times sin of delta 1. So, can be written as 9.6 into 17 divided by 2 into sin of 18.435 degree, which gives me the answer as 25.804 centimeter. Next, face width B is written as 0 0.3 times capital R. So, I write down it as 0 0.3 into 25.804. That gives me the answer as 7.7412 centimeter. Or you can write down B as 10 times MT. So, I write down 10 into 9.6. So, I get the answer as B is equal to 96 mm, that is 9.6 centimeter. So, selecting the smaller value from the calculated B, that is B is equal to 7.7412 centimeter. Next, Levy's dynamic load that is FD. For this, let's find out tangential load on pinion that is FT. We can write down the formula as MT is equal to FT into D1 into 1 minus 0.5 B divided by capital R whole divided by 2. By substituting the value of MT and B and R, I get the answer for FT as 1755.7 kgf. Next, Levy's dynamic load FD. We know the formula for FD as CV into NSF into KM into FT, where NSF is 1 to 2. So let's take the average of it as 1.5. KM is given as 1.1 to 1.25. So the taking the average as 1.175. The formula for Vm is pi into d1 into n1 divided by 60 by substituting the values here as pi into 0 0.1632 multiplied by 360 divided by 60. So I get the answer for Vm as 3.08 meter per second. Next, Cv. We know the formula as 3.5 plus Vm raised to power 1 by 2 divided by 3.5. If I substitute the value of Vm as 3.08 in the formula, I get the answer for Cv as 1.5014. Therefore, by using the above formula of Fd, I get the answer for Fd as 4645.96 kgf. Next, beam strength of pinion that is Fs. The formula is Fs is equal to sigma B1 into B into capital Y V1 into 1 minus B upon R whole divided by Pd, where Pd can be written as 1 upon Mt. By substituting all the values of sigma B, B, capital Y V1, we get the answer for Fs as 6741.9 kgf. Since in this case, Fd is less than Fs, that means beam strength is greater than the dynamic load so the design is safe next step is to find out buckingham's dynamic load fd so let's find out pcd of gear that is d2 d2 is given as mt into z2 that is 0 0.0096 multiplied by 52 that gives me the answer as 499.2 mm Next, Vm based on larger PCD, that is Vm is equal to pi into D1 into N1 is equal to pi into D1 into N1 upon I, since I is equal to N1 upon N2. So, I get the value of Vm as 184.5 meter per minute. Use the same Buckingham equation for the spur gear too. Checking for Buckingham's dynamic load. The condition is that Fs1 should be greater than Fd. We know the formula for Fd as Ft plus 0 0.164 into Vm into Cb plus Ft divided by 0 0.164 into Vm plus 1.485 into under the root Cb plus Ft. From table 41, 
C is equal to 11860 into E for 20 degree full depth involute profile where E is equal to 0 0.080. This is for commercially cut gear and referring to table 42. Therefore, C can be written as 11860 multiplied by 0 0.080 that gives me the answer as 948.8 Newton per mm that is 948.8 kgf per centimeter so fd can be written as 1755.7 plus 0 0.164 into 184.5 multiplied by 948.8 into 7.7412 plus 1755.7 whole divided by 0 0.164 into 184.5 plus 1.4 485 into under the root 948.8 multiplied by 7.7412 plus 1755.7 that gives me the value of FT as 3357.38 kgf therefore FD is less than FS which means FS1 is greater than FD hence the design is safe for Buckingham's dynamic load Next step is checking for the wear load. The condition for the safe design is FW should be greater than or equal to FD. We know the formula for wear load FW as B1 into Q into K into B divided by cos of delta 1 where D1 is equal to 16.32 cm. Q is equal to 2i divided by i plus minus 1. So I write down it as 2 into 3.06 divided by 3.06 plus 1 plus sign is for externally meshing and minus sign is for internal meshing therefore I get the value for Q as 1.51 and the K is written as Sigma C square into sine of alpha into 1 upon capital E1 plus 1 upon capital E2 divided by 1.4 where E1 and E2 are modulus of elasticity so I write down K as 11,000 whole square multiplied by sine 20 degree into 2 divided by 2.15 into 10 raised to power 6 whole divided by 1.4. So I get the answer for K as 27.5 kgf per centimeter square. Therefore, FW can be written as 16.32 into 1.51 into 27.5 into 7.7412 divided by cos of 18.435 degree. So I get the answer for FW as 5529.9 kgf. Since FW is greater than FD, therefore the design is safe for wear load. So dear student, this way we have designed the bevel gear. Thank you.